tell me about the rights that they've acquired from the artist. If the, if the right is a work for hire, it's a different right than if it's a purchase of a copyright. Yeah, that's a really good distinction. Um, typically, uh, the record company is going to, they're going to do two things. They want the publishing. They want their publishing arm to get the publishing. And they're going to negotiate on that. But you, they're not going to give it to you until you ask for it. And uh, hopefully, you keep your publishing. And there are a lot of good reasons to do that. And the second thing they're going to do is you're going to enter into, if you're the artist, into an employment contract. And it's called a royalty artist agreement, but you work for the record company. And one of the things that that's nailing down is the fact it's not a work made for hire per se, although sometimes they will actually have that language, which should make you fearful. But typically, there'll be some kind of language in, you know, to the effect that you're assigning any and all rights, whatever they may be. And it may be a work made for hire to the sound recording uh, based upon the notion that the uh, record company and or producer are actually the ones that are financing it. That's the argument. Keep your, keep your publishing. You know, you can get rich in 20 years when people do covers of your songs, but we're ponying up a quarter of a million dollars. We're paying for the, the actual production, and we want the ownership to that particular performance embodied in the sound recording. And that has always been the argument for a very long time. Really, truthfully, that goes back to the 50s when you started to have rock and roll artists actually own their own publishing, which was unusual. Prior to that time, the Frank Sinatras of the world, they didn't write songs. Uh, you know, and so they weren't even part of this whole equation. You know, they got paid uh, uh, you know, some small royalty on the sale of units, and that's it. They got no publishing. They had no clout whatsoever to negotiate for the sound recording because they didn't own the, the music itself anyway. But then with you know, the 50s and the rock and roll and the, the later the 60s, and you, know, you started having the popular creators of music were also the people who, by and large, wrote the music, and then things got really interesting. And one of the things the record companies attempted, and really, for the most part, hung, hung on to, hanged on, whatever, uh, kept for themselves, was ownership of these sound recordings, uh, for which they would not receive performance royalties in the traditional United States you know, venues for performance, including radio and, and such. Well, now, how does that affect the, the right to retrieve your, your publishing. After 35 years, you can notify the, the, the copyright yes. holder. Now, how does that apply to the, mute, to the recording, the sound recording? Th that's a wonderful question, and, and that applies if it's not a work made for hire, right. uh, which I think you're trying to steer me toward. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if, if you do enter into the work made for hire agreement under the law, you never owned it, so there's never a possibility that this can come back or revert to you. And what he's talking about is in the situation where you simply assign it, which is normally the case, which means to legally transfer whatever rights you have, there is the opportunity between the 35th and 40th year to actually, in effect, have these rights revert back to you. Um, so in 2013, there's going to be a lawsuit. Yes. Oh, yeah. A lot of them, probably. Because that's the 35 um, years after the passage of the 1978 Act that, that created this. Yes. Well, you know, what, what a lot of the, the more cynical scholars, Lawrence Lessig and others, are saying is that at that point in time, they'll probably just go ahead and extend it again. <laughs> it, it's been extended something like 14 times, and don't quote me on that number, but I, it's some incredible number.